with us since they were very small. They were little just like Angada right there is. They've lived with us since they were tiny. With those different wildlife, incredible opportunities to uh, meet them up close. today you fancy muggers we got some beautiful salads made by Rajani right here perfect looking stuff yeah 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 all right Bali champ look at that look at that and one for the wild man here and look what you got right there this is a beautiful salad this has some brie in it I see there's roasted grapes I think that's what this is called a roasted grape salad with brie and raisins and what is that pistachios a massive amount of romaine that is a beautiful looking salad and I think we got some hungry chimpanzees finding it simply delightful look at Vali he is tuned into that salad right there hunting, the hunting out the grapes Vali is a lover of grapes some of you know Vali you know, Vali's favorite fruit is grapes. I always say the only thing he likes better than a grape is a frozen grape. Yep, yep. Vali thinks that is top flight. So I'm working on those grapes. I don't know. Mighty hard to talk me out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so has got a runaway grape right there. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. There it is. So Griva's loving what he's got right there. He's got some fabulous stuff as well. Yeah, look at that. Look at that great ape having him go. Oh, yes, dad's getting a big forkful right there. The fabulous baby Taro swinging around, not too interested in food. She might eat a tiny bit. And then we've got the fabulous Sugriva here with Cody She's chowing down the salad from Rajani, today's chef extraordinaire. She's made us some great salads lately. And even Nangata's getting into some chowing on something down there. He says, this is not half bad. This is not half bad. Yeah, he's, he likes himself a salad. He doesn't like these, as you can see. He put these up forward. He loves the romaine. Those are, those are weird leaves. <laughs> and it's some good stuff. Here, yeah. I'll help you. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm searching. I want to get make sure there are no grapes left in the salad, as I have the best stuff. Yeah, good boy. Sagriva, what do you think? You're getting the very best stuff. You because it's all good stuff to Sagriva. That's why Sagriva is the big Buddha. He eats all of his food all the time. He's not like Bali, who's been picky for a decade. Sagriva's not too picky about anything. He's a chow hound, chow hound. Yeah. What do you think down there, wild man? You having some fun stuff? I got it. Yeah, I see that. I see that. Looking like you're having a time. You look a little short down there. You're kind of low. You're kind of low, boy. Yeah, look at you. You're having a good time. He's oh man, I'm over here just chowing. I got a good boy. These great apes are fabulous kids. Bali is 10 years old. Baby Tara is one and a half. Sue Griva is also 10 years old. And then the wild child on the end there is two and a half. 35 pounds, 165, what's she, 25 we think right now? Yep. Don't poke anybody with that fork, watch out. Tara's going crazy. Tara, Tara, why you gotta be crazy? And Vali at about 125 right now. Yeah, yeah, oh, he says that is some good stuff, good stuff. All right, guys, the salad is our first fabulous course. What's happening out there? We sure enjoy all of you coming and sharing this with us. 
What kind of questions we got this evening there, guys? What's their favorite food? We kind of did a smidge of that just now. Volley's favorite food really does seem to be grapes. I mean, Volley has a huge sweet tooth, and he likes everything sweet. He'll take sweet food over play. Even though he's thin, he still, you'd think he's a, a chow hound. You know, if you give him access to a bunch of little mini yogurts, he will eat them until he pops. He loves his sweets. Tara, what is Tara's favorite food? Probably is still her baby bottle full of uh, nutritious, delicious. She likes watermelon. Yeah, Bali likes watermelon too, but Tara definitely loves a melon. And what does Sagriba think? What's your favorite food, you big monkey? Mangoes. Oh, yeah, mangoes. You give Sagriba a fresh mango, and that is a happy AP. We'll double fist some big, giant sized Miami mangoes. He'll put one in each hand and chow it, and he'll work that seed until it is bare of all mango-liciousness. He is a chow hound like that for sure. And what about the little man? What's Angada's favorite food? Yogurt. Ooh. He really likes green apples right now. Green apples and yogurt for Angada the wild man. Great ape, great ape. Yeah. All right, you good boys. What else is going on, guys? Are they always happy or do they get cranky and give you all attitude? They're just very carefree right? They have a social care that dominates who they are. They want to be in charge. They, they have a hierarchy about what's happening, and they're looking for that. That's a lot between Bali and Sugriva. Tara believes that she is in charge. You know, she runs around saying, give me that. Let me have some of this. Pulls on you, pushes on you. Look at her just grabbing Bali by the arms, and I'll just chew on you. And the boy's greatest defense against Tara is ignoring her. Right, that's what it is. Eventually, Volley will get mad sometimes and he'll reach over and chomp her and she will scream as though she has lost an arm. Hey, hey, hey! Oh, look at him, did he pick out? He just wanted the cheese. He, well, he wanted, the, he wanted the, 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 the sweet part, he just doesn't know. And Tara's chewing his elbow off. Right there, you can see it. Tara is chewing away on Volley, making him uh, react. Now, he wants, he wants the lettuce with extra flavoring. He's going in for the pistachios. There's a pile of pistachios there. Sugriva is very chill, and Sugriva is very large and in charge. Sugriva has been bigger, stronger, and had really early blooming giant canines. And so he could bite harder than Bali for years now. And Bali's got late blooming canines, and Sugriva's got really early blooming canines. So <laughs> Sugriva has been large and in charge. He is the powerhouse, yeah. And he's just bigger and heavier, more muscles and stuff. Angara, Angara thinks that he's just always wild. He gets crazy, he gets cranky, he's tired and gets cranky. But he's so much, he's just a clown. He just plays. Yep. Plays and plays and plays. You know, you're just trying to get him to settle down becomes a lot of the effort. Just look at him with that piece of lettuce. He's, that's his ninth bite on the same piece. <laughs> he's just flipping it around. What else you know? I don't they think know they, we think it's funny. they know, yeah, they think we think something's funny. They'll laugh with us. They, they think comedy is there. funny and they like a comical moment, but I don't think they get the rhythm of a joke. Of the word. I think Sagriba thinks everything is a joke. He'll come over and he'll throw something at you and then he'll laugh and throw it away. Like, oh, that's funny. Yeah, Sagriba so likes, Sagriba <laughs> thinks that things are funny. He thinks there's funny stuff that goes on. He wants to get up on on something and poke at you, and when you come to touch him, he laughs about it. You get you let him get out there and play, and you tell him, "Okay, let's go." And you say, and you reach for him, he pulls back and goes, "Ha ha ha!" He laughs at you, he laughs with you, he but he always thinks he's there. He see, Volley's got. Yeah, they like physical bang, knockdown stuff. Magic tricks. They like magic tricks a little bit. Um, Bali, Bali gets a magic trick better because I'm a magician, you know, clown myself, and I've just played magic tricks with Bali a lot. So Bali knows the principle. If something disappears, the first thing Bali does is check his ear. He wants to see where it might have gone. Sugriva so is now said, uh, round one is gone, guys. What is the problem with round two? I'm waiting for the next piece. Okay, okay. So, Sugriva, we have 
Dave's Killer Bread right there. Look at that. Look at that sliced up. Beautiful sandwich. Dave's Killer Bread. Organic peanut butter, organic strawberry jelly. It's so good. And that's how much Volley wants to play with Tara as he's ready to do that. Here is Volley's beautiful sandwich. He's talking about it, giving us a little commentary there. And what about you? What about you, crazy? Chimps are so ticklish. Tickling is their own whole internal comedy where they tickle each other, but they like the game of tickling, and so therefore they all tickle. They want us to tickle. They want to tickle you back. So Grieve is such a powerful guy, and he's so smart about it. He will hold Cody's partner, Sarah, down, and he will tickle her until she's about to burst. He believes that that tickling is uh, uh -huh. funny stuff. Yeah, he, he thinks it's comical to watch her laugh until she's going to pop, huh? He's looking around over my shoulder. He's like, I hope something else is going on here. Something else fabulous. Do the chimpanzees have favorite people? Certainly, they get their bonded troop, right? Certainly, the four of us make up their contact, you know, biggest group. And, and it's certainly that Bali spends the most time with China. Sugriva spends the most time with Cody, and Angada, of course, is spending the most time with Moksha. Um, they all have the potential to mix and match. We do not expose the big guys to new people. Vali will tolerate Sarah. Um, Sugriva still loves Sarah because he's always been with her, so he puts up with Sarah and lets her do that, and he'll still play with her and stuff. But she's very careful to have a balanced relationship with him. Vali's ready for something else. Sugriva's ready for something else. They're doing... They're doing some chimpy dancing. Okay, we got another set of oranges. We get a two orange night. Yes, we do. We have oranges. Who wants an orange? Volley chimp, get that orange. That's Volley's little call for give me something. Volley's got some skills tonight. That's a two punch orange. So Grieva's already peeled his, going for the crack and attack right there. What do you think? I sent you some, I sent you some orange peels. Oh, oh, look at that. He's getting the pat pat. <laughs> How do they understand language or is it just by the talking behavior? What do they what do, do they understand or are they understanding tone? A lot of this is kind of an old concept about dogs. The dogs are understanding the tone in your voice, not the words. There are dogs that have learned a thousand words, right? So the capacity for vocabulary is gigantic takes children years to catch up on those vocabulary ideas that dogs have. Chimpanzees understand thousands of words. They understand the rhythm of your conversation. Of course they get the tone, just like you get the tone of somebody, but it's a constant understanding, growing thing. You can teach them any word in a matter of moments. You can show them an object, talk to them about it, and they'll remember what that thing is. Um, it's not necessarily helpful to, for them to have a big vocabulary because they're not working on discovering new things to do. They're very um, much living in Eden. They have everything they need and all of their real desires are met. They are in that huge habitat. They have a huge family of other apes and people around and they do it. Scriba loves a clean table. He's buffing it up there a little bit, make sure he gets all the orange juice off the table, yeah. That's him learning through emulation that this is how you clean tables. He's got that all scoped right there. What do you got there, Alicia? All right, we have some real stuff. Look at Sugriva peeking, he's peeking. What's that? Look, look. What do you see, Sugriva? He sees the tip of the spoon. Mm -hmm. It's the tip of the spoon. Okay, okay, there it is. It's flying up. I'm being very careful. I've got a coconut. I've got a coconut. Volley chimp. Bali's got a lovely coconut right here himself. He's like, let me have that puppy. It's a half a coconut stuffed with coconut sorbet. Good, tasty stuff. Bali thinks it's delish. He gets a little reckless with it and will flip the whole thing on the floor. On the china, we'll help him out. Oh, oh, Sagriva's chomping away there. He's like, okay, okay, you can handle it for me. Yeah, yeah. Jack Matthews would like to know Doc Antle can teach Volley how to salute China. <laughs> well, who is Jack Matthews? I don't even know who that is. He is Jimmy Neutron's older, funnier brother. <laughs> Are we open for the summer? 
We are open about 95 days every year. Those are every Saturday from the beginning of March until uh, around mid-December. Then we are open on Mondays or Tuesdays, and we are open every Thursday. Those days happen in March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and up into parts of December. You can look at MyrtleBeachSafari.com and see our exact schedule. Three-year-olds can come on the night safari. The night safari is what I like to call a la carte. Everything's happening around you, but there's a lot of space to hang out. There's places to sit down and enjoy the view, enjoy the wildlife, and you do not have to participate in any activity. The day safari is much more structured, much more of a show, and you're following along on a very exact schedule. The opportunities to see animals pop up, you're there with other people that are having those encounters and opportunities, and it's structured. Three-year-olds often find that three and a half, four hours of structure too much. So generally, we say six years old and behaving for the day and any age for the night. How do you keep your gym so healthy? These guys live on that fabulous diet of fresh fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, and seeds. That opportunity of living on fresh Fruits, grains, vegetables, nuts, and seeds makes for some of the best diets. Good for them and good for us. Um, that gives them that opportunity. Lots of fresh air, lots of stimulating activities, lots of things to do and alternative uh, places to play and activities to have, I think creates an enriching environment and therefore a happy, healthy mind and body. Hey everybody, we'd like to thank you for coming out with us this evening and hanging out with Bali and Tara and Sugriva and the fabulous Angara, the cutest boy in the whole wide world. You guys can meet these guys by visiting Myrtle Beach Safari. You coming and meeting them, meeting the incredible big cats, Bubbles the Elephant, and so much more creates for us a way to care for them and to go out and do our international conservation work around the wild. That is our rarespeciesfund.org, supported by Myrtle Beach Safari. All right, great apes, let's say goodnight. Bali, Bali, say bye-bye, everybody. Bali, chimp, quit eating that monkey's foot. Bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. And stay tuned so you can find out how Rajni put that beautiful... ...beautiful salad together. Bye, guys. Hey, we're back here at Myrtle Beach Safari making another salad. That's just what we do. Today's salad is gonna be a brie and roasted grape salad. Roasted grapes, it's gotta be good, right? Grapes are awesome, you make wine with them, so it's amazing. So we'll, we'll do some grapes, shall we? Okay, <laughs> well, let's, let's do the grapes first because we've never roasted grapes before, so let's give it a go. It's gonna be a chemistry experiment. All right, so. What we have to do with the grapes is first we're gonna have to take something to coat them with. So we're gonna grab some olive oil. Let's go ahead with our um, tablespoon of olive oil, girl. All right, so then we're gonna just rip up some grapes. I'm gonna rip some grapes off here. Okay. And we'll just start throwing them in here. Might as well start making some dressing, shall we? Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a champagne vinegar dressing, so we're gonna start off with about a cup of champagne vinegar or half a cup. What do we pour out? Well, we have a half a cup. Half a cup, there we go. Let's do a half a cup. <laughs> that works. Okay. We'll see, we'll, and we'll taste it, we'll decide. So a half a cup of the champagne vinegar, and then we're gonna need um, half a cup of olive oil, or not olive oil, I keep saying that because I'm Italian, avocado oil. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna do shallots, which is something new to me. Holly, you've done shallots before? She loves shallots, I guess. They're very good. They're supposedly a milder type of onion. All right, now 
all-important honey, mm. which I don't think this is gonna be enough honey, honestly. There might not even be enough dressing for these apes. We might actually have to put some more in. More honey. Like tons more honey. Could definitely be sweeter. Sometimes you don't have to care about measuring things out. <laughs> you just eyeball it. <laughs> the monkeys, like children, seem to have a sweeter palate than most adults do. I've read two different recipes on this. One says it only takes five minutes for these to explode. <laughs> the other ones say it takes 15. So we'll see how it goes. We'll just keep watching it until there's a big giant explosion. <laughs> <laughs> Other guest stars, we're also gonna put some pistachios in here, add some protein for these guys. And we decided to go with a honey roasted and a regular pistachio. Yeah. All right, so we decided that we're gonna do this brie, but we're not sure. Whether the brie is gonna like keep its shape, because they say to thinly slice the brie. So I threw it in the freezer to see if it would help. Hopefully it will. We'll find out. Brie's not gonna make it to the salad anymore. I shouldn't have let her taste it. <laughs> Don't try this at home, kids. I'm an expert. <laughs> I'm an expert at getting burned. Don't do this at home. All right, I wanna try cutting one of these open. Step back, I think we use a smaller knife than that. <laughs> it explodes everywhere. difference between that grape and this grape, except size. <laughs> and for her to eat, oh, I like them. Mm. I like them. I like the big ones. Of course you do. Run, grapes, run! <laughs> Water's fine, jump on in. Well, so hopefully the chimpanzees like the salad. You'll all have to let us know if they did or they didn't. 
And hopefully, if you guys want, you could try the salad at home. It's, according to Holly, a very, very good salad. It's really good. <laughs> and if you like this video, please subscribe and like us. That might be scary. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> with us since they were very small. They were little just like Angada right there is. They've lived with us since they were tiny. With those different wildlife, incredible opportunities to uh, meet them up close.